Obviously, my name is Thomas Parkinson, and I run Fast Track FBA. Obviously, I'm sure you probably would, because you're probably going to be watching this in my group. Um, but if you don't, obviously, be sure, if maybe you're watching this on the replay or you know, on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. I think it's down here. Um, but also, as well, give me a thumbs up. I really like that. And if you found this content useful, be sure just to drop a comment down below. That's really useful for me and really helpful. Obviously, it kind of lets me know that you like what I'm doing, and obviously, I'll do more of it. But also, as well, if there is any anything else that you want me to should we say record or to do any videos on then obviously what I can do is I can make that content that's going to help your business now what I'll do is I just share a little bit about me I've been selling on Amazon for ooh, three years now and I've been doing six figures for the whole three years that I've been doing and basically everything uh, that I'm going to talk about now is some tips and tricks that I've learned I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm an expert and I know everything because I don't but uh, over my time in Amazon I've learned quite a few things and I think it's quite useful to share back whether it be through sourcing or systematization, systemization or optimization of our processes and our systems and I'm very happy to share that with people and you know in the Fast Track FBA group and, and also as well I run a sourcing service called Fast Track FBA and what we do is we have a team and also a lot of software custom built which allows us to source and to find deals for people to resell on Amazon so so this is another seller Amazon seller account and I've got two I've got one that I actually sell on and one that I don't and we use that for another reason but obviously I can show you this because we've not made any money or any sales so on here when you come into Amazon seller account now the first thing we're going to be going through is called the inventory or the listing loader and I just want to talk you through how it looks like in Amazon and to download the file that you're going to need and obviously this is just useful because it can be useful for you to understand how we go about getting this information but obviously the Excel sheet that we're going to provide you with at the end will have all this in but it's really good for you to know anyway so when you come in under here under inventory and if I just zoom in to try and make this as big as possible for you so over here you've got inventory and then over here you've got add products via upload now I'm just going to show you here you have the option here to add products via upload which is really useful because when you want to add one product you might go to add products and type in the ASIN for example here but your problem comes is when you're trying to do like 5, 10 it starts taking ages and the biggest problem you face that right now is you've got to go through hazardous and you've got to go through showing that you know no it doesn't contain batteries it doesn't have all these problems or it doesn't have all these things and you're like well of course it doesn't we've checked it already but if you want to skip all that inventory loader allows you to skip it straight away because it does it all automatically and the way you do that is by uploading products through here to the up the add products file upload but first of all you need to get the file now for you obviously if you're watching this don't worry you're not actually going to have to get it because we're going to provide it for you but if you wanted to here's how you get it and it's quite a bit it's, quite, it's not an easy process so go to inventory first of all inventory reports oh no sorry wrong one add products via upload I should get this right and then on the right hand side it says useful links and you say here I want to download an inventory file and then here you can create a custom inventory file and it's got all these things but right now we're not interested in that we're going to come right down to the very very bottom down here and it says inventory files and it's kind of not even open for us so right down here we've got right away it's got different types of files and these are generic files that you can use which are going to be helpful so we are looking for product matching only now this is useful for people doing things like online arbitrage or retail arbitrage because we are selling on existing listings we're not trying to create a new listing the ASINs already exist they already have everything for it what we are solely trying to do is just literally say that we want to sell on that same ASIN so this is really useful and so we're going to use this file called the inventory inventory uploader there are other ones such as here price and quantity you can literally just update your price and quantity so if you want to do bulk price changes without a price a price um, you know, repricing software you could build something for that but for the moment we're just looking at inventory loader so let's look at this so click here it just opens up a separate page and it says to download your inventory loader click here and we're just going to click on that and straight away that downloads and it will just be an Excel file now once you load this up I'll wait for it to load it gives you this kind of front page which is how to use it and then the second page is the actual inventory file itself now up here and if I kind of zoom in to make your life a bit easier if you're watching 
we've got things like SKU, product ID, which is are you trying to upload by ASIN, EAN, uh, UPC, or even like the book if you're trying to upload by book. Um, you know what product type it is, price, minimum, maximum price, item condition, quantity. Are you going to add the product? Are you trying to delete it from inventory? Will you ship internationally? X Y the shipping. And there's a lot to go through, and there's a lot. And I'm just going to scroll through because I'm not going to go through everything. But it's got like batteries included, and these are the questions that get asked. Obviously, if you're doing it manually, but this sheet has it all in one go. So like health and safety data, item weight, item volume, etc., etc. Certain parts of this require you to fill out and certain parts don't. So for us, we've literally taken this already and we have downloaded this into a file. So I'm just going to come straight over to the file that I've created. So here, this is the file that we created. And if I just zoom in to make your life easier again, and I've put one row as an example in. So we've got here, SKU. So this is the SKU of the product, pretty simple. Product ID, now that's ATIN. And then we've got product ID type, and that's basically saying one to say, hey, the one in the cell B is an ASIN. And then we've got the price. So we've got the price here, that's £239.30. We've got minimum cell allowed price. So if you're using something like Amazon Reprice, you can put that in, but we don't. We always leave it blank because we use a repricer as opposed to Amazon's own one. Item condition, now item condition 11, it means new. And then we're always going to say, quantity ironically we don't actually say anything we leave it completely blank add and delete we will say add um, if quick question if you want to know why we add quantity is zero or blank it's the fact that right now we're not trying to ship anything all we're trying to do is create the listings in our seller central because once we create the listings we can then create the shipments against those listings but the biggest problem is when you've got 10 15 20 SKUs that you want to add doing them manually becomes a pain whereas this way you can bulk upload 10 15 20 100 not a problem in one big go and then once you create the listings you'll then add or once you create the shipment you're then adding in the quantity. So for us right now, we're not worried about the shipments. We're not worried about the quantity, hence we leave it blank. And if you want to know, it uploads fine, not a problem. So then we have add and delete, obviously we're adding. We're not worried about ship internationally. Fulfillment center, now for us in our business, everything is Amazon fulfilled. So if you're merchant fulfilled, you're gonna to have to look back through this and see how on the right thing, it says Amazon EU or default. So you're gonna to have to change it to default if that's gonna be merchant fulfilled. Obviously merchant shipping price, tax code, etc., etc. And for us, we say here under batteries, we say false, false, because nothing has batteries in it. And we say supplier declared hazardous resignation, and we say not applicable. And just by having those batteries false, false, and those supplier declared regulations or hazardous regulations not applicable means that now the products go straight through i.e. we're not having to manually go through and if I just give you an example I'll close that when we come back up to add product if we want to add a product and let's say for example now if I want to add or can I add like Lego for example I'll just do one example if I wanted to add I don't think it will let me because um, I am not I'm actually ungated and not ungated in anything here. Uh, show variations, can I sell this? And Lego is probably going to be something that I can't. Um, I don't know, we'll come back. But when we go through that process, the problem we get is the fact that at the end, it keeps asking us, is it hazardous? Is it got batteries in it? And it's just a pain. Do 15 of them, you're like, it's going to take me 20 minutes. Whereas the inventory uploader is a lot quicker. So let's just come back. So right now we have this sheet, nice and simple. It basically has product, 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 price, really simple. Now what I'm going to do is just try and find a product. Let's say for example, if you've got these two DeLonghi kettles, I want to say, can we add one manually through here? So this would be the normal process if I'm able to sell it. No, I'm not. But interesting, can I put it through my inventory loader? And I want to say, can I do this? It's not going to like me if I try to do this manually. Uh, product one, I just want to change this. Product one, here we go. The reason is I've pre-formatted this to make it easier on today's demonstration. But what I'm trying to do now is just saying, can I give you a demonstration of the inventory loader? So this is, say for example, now filled out. And if you'd imagine I'd done this manually, it's not, it's actually done by formula. And I'll talk you through how I'll do that in a minute. But what we'd want to do is, if we've once you've got this, all we want to do is, if you're on the Excel sheet, you literally come in and do file, if I do editing, 
file save as and when you save it or you can export it if you want save as and you might save it into like downloads for example and you'd save it as a CSV file there oh, no. and then interesting enough when I come into inventory loader when I do it on Amazon or on Google Sheets I always save it a tab separated value which is I think you can do CSV I will try both but I've just tried it with TSV a tab separated value and it works better so let's come in and so when you upload now what you're looking to do is to take here go back into your seller central go to inventory and add products via upload and then you go already got a product file and click continue so voila it says right here you go upload your product file so for us we'd literally come in we go to our downloads or get the products I'm gonna get first of all uh, you get this one which is that's XLS just having a quick look this is CSV so let's do the CSV I don't think it's gonna like that nope interesting and then here is doo -doo. I think this is no it doesn't want to upload there uh, one second in uh, add product via upload continue Uh, okay, interesting. So for some weird reason, I, this wasn't a problem about 10 minutes ago, it says here, we require additional information for your seller on payment account, but here's what you would do. You would literally drag this product here and drag it over and upload. And then what that will allow you to do is to upload these products straight away. And if I give you an example, I did it just a minute ago before we started, just to test the process. I've managed to upload four products here on the inventory loader really quickly, and it's uploaded the products and the ASINs here. So that has worked, but unfortunately on this account, because we haven't got payment details in at the moment, it's basically saying we're unable to upload that. But the process is very simple. You come in, you click already have a product file, and then you drag your product file over to there. And once that's done, it's going to take, uh, it will take 15, 20 minutes, and then it will upload from there. So one second. Continue. Oh, okay. So I do tell a lie. Here's where you can do it. This is how we did it before. So I literally came in and said, add product via upload. And I said here, need to create a product file. So I'm kind of going through a separate way. And then here, upload your inventory file. And then here you can choose. So I want inventory loader file. And you can test it here if you want. Test it, check it. So you get the system to check it and send you an alert. But I'm not worried about that. You're not worried about shipping it, so you're not going to send a text, you know, literally a text document into Amazon. No, not at all. And then you're literally going to choose the file you want. So we'll come in. I'm just going to quickly check. TSV file. And can I do view by date? Because I've got two of them. So I want the most recent one. There we go. And then I can send an email, but I'm not worried. And I'm going to click upload. So you can see here, I've uploaded one today uh 4.18 or just a minute ago and then also I've uploaded one before and that successfully submitted five records and I can download a progress report so this is uploading it now probably takes about five to ten minutes um, for anything I mean you unless you're doing more than five meg and you've got a five meg file that's gonna be big so don't worry five to ten minutes and then you can pop off get a coffee come back and then this file will be uploaded so we'll leave that for the moment right so if I just kind of go through, what I've done is I've downloaded this inventory file, inventory file, and then what I've also then done is copied it over to Google Sheets, which we're going to share with you, and just done a sample. For example, this is where we've put one product in with this ASIN, and we put a price in, and we're now going to upload, and we've upload, we've put in all the supplier, which is the batteries and the hazmat, and we just uploaded that. And the reason why we've done that is to show you how that process works i.e. can you can you see how we download a product create that file just one and then we're going to upload it and then actually see how that process works so what I'm going to do now is just take a moment and have a quick look back at the Facebook group and um, but also at the same time if you've got any questions or comments be free to ask me and then what I'll do next is move on to how to do this using something like um, FBA multi-tool or SAS and how you can integrate that into an inventory file uploader just to speed up your process. 
So this, uh, if I just kind of have a little look, we've got, sh so Luke has asked, what if the product does contain batteries? Now, interestingly enough, some products do contain batteries. I would probably say do that through the, the manual one. So put that one product through manually. Um, and the reason is it's gonna ask you certain questions, i.e. like, does it have this type of battery? Do you, and then you'll need to give a safety data sheet. So generally, when you source, supplying batteries can make a product a little bit more uh, risky in regards to hazmat. So what I'd really recommend is before you, before you purchase that product with batteries in, try just putting it through and creating a shipment and seeing if it lets you ship. If it does, then great, not a problem. But you've obviously already created that SKU in your listings and that's fine. So the next question we've got here is, hi Thomas, is the inventory template available for any of us? Yes, I will. the moment we finish this live, I will share you a link to the inventory template, and this will be exactly the one I'm talking about now. So what you can do is you can, you can download it, you can create a copy of it, and then obviously you can use that in your business if it's gonna help you, or hack it and do whatever you want and hack it into your sheets, just to make your processes a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient. Um, but for me, Thomas Parkinson, thank you very much. And what I will say is if you like this and you like this content, be sure to give me a big like. I really like that. Um, also, just drop down the comment down here. Say that I like it or any questions, let me know. And the reason is just have that feedback is really useful. Obviously, I don't hear everything going on. But if you let me know, that's really beneficial. And hopefully you found this really informative and really useful. And if there's anything else you want me to do, be sure to drop the button down, drop it down in the comments below. But also, as well, if you're watching on YouTube, and I will replay this on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. That's really useful. And any other content we release, you're going to see as well. Um, but for me, Thomas Parkinson, a fast track FBA sourcing, thank you very much. And thank you very much for spending your time watching this live with me. Thank you.